just pulled off to the side of the road real quick to show you something. Now imagine you're at a friend's house and you pop open a big tub of mixed nuts and you go, like I do, you go right for the cashews. How cool. Banana trees, cashew trees, so sick. The late season cashew. That's how they grow. So yeah, the whole process from here, I don't really know too much. You definitely gotta like toast them and roast them and all that kind of good stuff. And they, they can be kind of poisonous, but yeah, how cool. Cashew trees, so sick. Buenos dias amigos, I'm Sean. And that's Astrid, and we did it. We sold everything, traded our hectic New York City lifestyle for a more beachy existence here in Mexico. Along with our two cats, Sanderson and Indo, this is Sean in Paradise. This is what a brownout looks like. We were having a brownout. It's like a blackout, but you still have some power, but not enough to run like big things. So Astrid has a deadline that she has to hit. So I'm gonna set up the generator. We bought a generator last year, a small one, just because it's kind of nice to have, especially for a situation like this. All right, there she is, the Ryobi. Keep it in the shed, locked up, bolted. It's gonna be one of those days. All right, you got it. I'm gonna set it up over here so that the exhaust goes out, I don't know, 20 to 50 yards away from whatever. Don't have it near the house. This is pretty good. I'm super lazy today, so that's gonna be my tripod situation. Either, but now I'm gonna take the extension cord and run it upstairs for Astrid to her workspace. Ah, life in Mexico. There's the generator down there. And running the cord all the way through, looping up and around. And then we run it all the way to this one. We had has three prongs. It's a three pronged, uh, three prong pronger. This is where Astrid does her work. Boom, he's got juice. Morning. <laughs> Cafe. Coffee. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Wakey, wakey. <laughs> So usually as a fashion designer, I work in 2D. I sketch everything up, I make all my patterns, and then I work in actual fabric. To diversify, I've trained myself working in 3D. And this was a really fun project. It was a contest from the program Browseword that I work with. They had kids in um, all over the world sketch a dress. And then they gave us the picture and told us to translate this dress into a 3D form. First, I have to make a two-dimensional pattern, a 2D pattern. And then once I have that, I can transfer that into Browseware. I make the actual pattern. I work in the program. This is the form that I use. Her name's Olivia. She's an avatar. I can put everything on her. This is what it looks like. And then I can dress her. And I can look at it from every angle. So my interpretation of the dress that the girl Rachel from Spain sketched that looked like this before now looks like this. I get up in the morning, I get my coffee, and then I walk up the stairs. I'm under the palapa in my studio. 
Oh, look at that guy. So young, so innocent. So things that I have when I'm writing, I always have my journal full of notes. This is yellow journal number one. I always have the book Gringos in Paradise that I'm basing my book on. This is another local book that I use as inspiration. It was written by these five women here in San Pancho. But yeah, I use this as like a, a bit of a reference point. And I always have this with me when I'm writing. Uh, the last gift that my mother gave me before she passed away. I've never read it. It's a collection of short stories, but I feel like once I read it, then I don't have something to look forward to. Uh, it's so sentimental that I don't read it now because it reminds me of my mom and it's a gift that has not uh, run its course yet. So I feel like the gift is still active. Okay, so my first job out of college was working for this publication called The Who's Who in America. It's this volume of books that are basically a compendium of all the notable professionals in the United States. Niche, office, medical kind of professionals world. But this is how it works. So there would be a salesperson in the office that I worked at that would call a doctor or a lawyer, any kind of professional, and they would ask them if they wanted to be a part of this compendium, this volume of people that are notable. The salesperson then would collect about 20 to 30 data points. Age, where they were born, where they went to school, brief professional history, you know, recognition, awards, things like that. Uh, they would collect all that data and then they would send it to me. And my job was to take these data points and turn them into a glowing, working paragraph narrative. Miss Smith went here, she traveled over to here, kind of fill in the blanks, you take a little bit of liberty. That biography is sent back to the professional to read it for approval or not approval. It was more creative than it sounds because you took all this abstract detail and then you kind of try to make it into something a little more fascinating. After I did that, I was looking for another job and I actually I actually found a job opening for a newspaper reporter in my area in Eastern North Carolina. My only professional writing experience was writing these who's who books um, and these biographies, but it was enough. Even though I didn't have a background in writing, I felt pretty comfortable, so I submitted some samples. Lo and behold, I got a job as a newspaper reporter. And my shift was Hoxville Island, which is this barrier island off of the coast of North Carolina. In the little town of Surf City was where my office was. And I basically was the beat reporter for the, the whole entire island. And I would cover everything from like traffic events to planning commission meetings to anything of note. There was a fire. If anything happened, they sent me. And also, I got to write a weekly column, Coastal Connection with Sean Crowley. My picture was there in the byline. But yeah, it was really exciting. What am I doing now? I started this YouTube channel as a way to provide my myself with some accountability. I'm writing a book about becoming an expat, it's not a how-to, it's more like a how we, uh, how we found the land, how we built the house. It's our story here, and I'm super looking forward to telling it, but I have a hard time finishing things and staying focused, uh, so adding the YouTube channel builds in some accountability for me. That means I gotta get it done. I thought I was gonna get it done in October. But yeah, so Astrid's upstairs. I'm downstairs uh, most days in front of the computer. It's kind of boring. Yeah, that's life, so that's what we do. All right. Kitten's first time. In the cardio. That's what do you think? What's the hope here? I hope that we could put them in here. Ooh. Can you get through? Oh, it's, it's close. <laughs> it's close. I want to clean this up a little bit. I've been saying that for a while. Oh, there we go. Oh, <laughs> it's too oh. late. <laughs>